And we're here with the incoming White House Chief of Staff, Reince Priebus. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as you are right now, I want to thank you for joining us at Justice. This is the first time since the uh, president-elect was voted in. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you, not just on behalf of Justice and all our viewers, but so many Americans, for what the uh, president-elect has done at Carrier. I mean, saving 1,200 jobs before he even got into the Oval Office is just incredible and just what the country needs. Well, I mean, it also shows you what kind of president he's going to be that, you know, he's not the type of guy that, that will, you know, I want to have an appointment with the president tomorrow at 445 for five minutes on the phone. He picks up the phone, he makes the call, and then a week later there's an announcement that these jobs are saved. That's really what the American people should expect. The president's going to stand up for the American worker and get things done, and that's who Donald Trump is. Well, you know, it's what he said he was, and it's, it's the man that I know, and uh, I'm just so happy that America is going to see what he is capable of even before he gets there. But uh, there are so that's many right. topics tonight. Let's talk about this this recount where Jill Stein, who got like 1% of the vote, I don't know what the woman is thinking. Now, everybody's suing everyone else, uh, FEC by her against Clinton and Trump, and then an FEC complaint by her against Hillary, and the Trump supporters are going against uh, Stein and Clinton, but the bottom line is there's no way that either one of them are going to win, although I think Hillary would come back from, you know, uh, another planet to try to win again. But what, what is your take on all of these recounts? Well, I think they should be dismissed. I mean, you, you have a person with 33,000 votes in Wisconsin running against a, or wanting a recount against Donald Trump, who had 1.7 million mm -hmm. votes. It is a legal impossibility for her to overturn the election, and therefore the elections commissions and the courts and the judges and the board of canvassers shouldn't have allowed these things to go forward. But I understand the statutes the way they are. Um, we're going to have a recount. It's going to be a waste of everyone's time and money. We're going to have to spend money that I think Jill yeah. Stein's campaign should reimburse us mm -hmm. for for a waste of our time. But look, Donald Trump will win again. They will lose again. But unfortunately, it's just a big, fat waste of time. And that's what we have to put up with. It's a waste of time, a waste of money. And the, uh, friends of mine who are in Wisconsin are, are saying that in the recount, uh, the president-elect is up. So I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> and in Michigan, the attorney general is moving to stop the recount. Here's the key, Judge. Yeah. But, Judge, you're, you mean, you know, as the, the key in Michigan is Jill Stein has alleged she's been aggrieved by the outcome. I don't know how you can lose by two million <laughs> votes and move for a recon and then claim that you've been aggrieved. She has no standing to bring the case. It's a frivolous case, and, and it's totally hypocritical for Hillary Clinton to, to not be denouncing this recount. When she conceded on election night, she agreed to concede after the AP mm -hmm. called the race. Totally hypocritical. And look, they were worried about Donald Trump not accepting the outcome of the election. Remember that outrage? Uh, Total yes. joke. Yes, yes it is. All right, let's move on. You are now chief of staff. You uh, or will be uh, in January. You are pretty much representative of the establishment. Is this a signal by Donald Trump that, look, everybody, I'm draining the swamp, but at the same time, there's still some establishment people who are going to be on the inside. We're going to have a combination of people. I mean, look, you know, me and Steve and Jared and, and Kellyanne and, and so many others are working together. Um, that's kind of what Donald Trump brought to the table, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason why he had one of the biggest or the biggest historical electoral landslides in a long time was because he was able to bring all spectrums of our party together, move them down the center of the interstate, and make it happen. And so he brought that same coalition into the White House. I think it's a great combination, and everyone works well together. And you know, why change things up that have been working so well? And clearly, uh, it appears that you are working well together. But, but you know, as we look back at the, at the race, I mean, the, Donald Trump certainly made some people pretty angry. Do you think that uh, the Bushes will ever accept the Trump presidency? I think so. I mean, and many of them have already reached out. I mean, they've reached out to the president-elect, and he's had great conversations with them and meeting with others that in some cases were critical and appointing people that had some critical words as well. And as you know, meeting with 
Governor Romney and bearing the hatchet yes. there and working together. But look, but that's all part of leadership is bringing right. Americans together and moving forward. Right. And for all of those people who said he was so thin skinned, I mean, his connection and his meeting, continuous meeting with Mitt Romney, if he decides not to take Mitt Romney or appoint him as Secretary of State, nominate him, uh, do you think there's another position that, that the president elect will put Romney in? Well, you never know. I mean, he's a talented governor, uh, and I think he had a lot of nice things to say after that last meeting. And look, the, the fact is they didn't know each other, and they, yeah. they hit each other pretty hard, and I mean, maybe Mitt hit a little harder, but uh. he didn't know president-elect either. And I think as people get to know each other, sometimes you realize, you know, maybe, maybe I was wrong about this. And so I think some of that is what you see, but I think most importantly to the American people is what they see is that we've got a president-elect who understands that and is willing to say, I'm going to appoint the best possible people. I'm going to talk to the best possible people. I'm not going to live in the past, but I'm going to live in the future. And that's what Donald Trump is doing every single day. And, and quickly, uh, you know, there were times when I'm sure people were thinking, oh, my God, this campaign is in a ditch. Uh, what is Donald Trump's magic? What is the magic of Donald Trump? Well, I think it's, number one, it's, it's a vision, but number two, I think he's someone who's real and authentic. I've often said that what this country is starving for is somebody real, authentic, and genuine that wants to serve their country with a pure heart and make a difference. I think people are tired of the plasticized Washington politician. Everything culminated. They had a choice between plasticized and genuine, mm -hmm. and they took the leadership and the vision and the genuineness of Donald Trump. And I mean, I think it's, I, I think that's what it is, and, and that's what he captured. All right. Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for joining us on Justice, and uh, thank Mr. Trump on behalf of all of us, President-elect. I will. Bye-bye. Thank you.